Hola, y'all. Happy Thursday. Getting ready to go into the weekend. Um, I'm excited. I'm gonna make several cakes this weekend. I'm making two cakes for a birthday party, and then I'm making another cake for church just to get some practice in. So I volunteered to make all the cakes for free because I really want to practice my decorating skills and some of the flavors. They're all three new flavors, like different flavors. So I'm excited about that. And the kids had their first track meet on Saturday and we have to be there and it's like an hour and a half from my house and we have to be there at 8 a.m. or earlier. So I'm gonna be getting up at the crack of dawn on Saturday, probably gonna be drinking coffee to stay awake. But all good things, um, very just looking forward to the weekend. But let's jump into this. Today I wanna give you something very practical, of course, that's what I love to do is practical things you can apply. But I wanna to talk to you today about some warnings. I want to tell you how the enemy works and so that you can recognize things that he's doing in your life that you may be ignorant of and you can identify them and then maybe you can, you know, fix some things or make sure that you're not taken advantage of, okay? Let's go to Matthew 4 and 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. That's the chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 4 is a great chapter. Go read it. The enemy, the devil actually tries to tempt Jesus three different times. And the first time, he, Jesus had been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights and he was hungry. And so the devil appeals to his flesh and says, you know, you can turn these stones into bread and you won't be hungry anymore. And then Jesus gives him a scripture. This is not what I want to talk about. I just want to lay this background foundation for you of what I'm about to talk about. He says, man shall not live. You know, the word of God says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So he gets past the first temptation with scripture. Okay. He goes to the second one. And the second one, he said, uh, he takes him up to this high place and he says, jump, basically jump off. You're not going to get hurt. Um, <clears throat> the Bible says that, you know, God will give his angels charge over you lest you dash your foot against his stone. So in other words, just do it. You're not going to get hurt. What could it harm? And Jesus comes right back at him with a scripture and says, don't you know that you're not supposed to tempt God? Okay. And then he takes him to his third place and he <clears throat> takes him to a really high mountain, I believe. <clears throat> and he shows him all the kingdoms of the world. And he says, I'll give you all of this. If you'll just bow down and worship me. And that was like the final straw. And Jesus was like, get behind me, Satan. You should only worship God and him alone. Like we don't worship anybody else. And then Satan left and it says angels came and ministered to Jesus. Okay, that's your backstory. All right, here are my thoughts on this whole temptation situation. I want to teach you something about what the enemy does in our lives. Okay, so I'm giving you some inside knowledge to help you out. So here are my thoughts. The enemy has a specific tactic, and we can see it in action with Jesus. This is actually a really great scripture to show you how the enemy operates. So let, we're going to look at that. The first thing he does is appeal to our flesh. Jesus was hungry. Satan knew he was hungry. So the first way that he tempted him was with something that he knew he wanted that would satisfy a craving that he had, okay? The first thing Satan does is appeal to your flesh. He says things like this. I want to tell you what this internal dialogue, what this voice is gonna sound like so that you can become even more aware. He says things like, ooh, doesn't that look good? Mmm, doesn't that feel good? Doesn't that sound good? Etc. He is going to appeal. He is going to appeal to your flesh. That means he's going to appeal to your lust. He's going to appeal to your senses. Your sense of touch. Does it feel good? Um, does it look good? He's going to go for your eyes. He's going to go for your ears. Oh, that the beat to that song is so great. Don't worry about the lyrics. It doesn't matter that the lyrics are talking about murder or sex or prostitution or really horrible things we can't even talk about. It doesn't matter if it's talking about sex trafficking. It doesn't matter what the lyrics say. That beat is good. 
doesn't that feel good? Oh, you could dance to that. You could choreograph a great dance to that. Let's not pay attention that the lyrics are talking about illicit use of drugs. No, we'll overlook that. That's, that's the voice, okay? Oh, doesn't that look good? It looks great. I mean, your body looks smoking in that dress. It leaves little to the imagination. I mean, we can see all that you got, honey bun, and people are gonna turn and look. That looks good. Okay, or, um, you know, you get the point. He's gonna appeal to that first, okay? Second thing he does, his second tactic, he gets a lot of people with the first one, guys. I mean, sometimes he doesn't have to go any further than that. He uses all of these and he uses them in different orders. He uses them on different times and different days. His second tactic, he says, nothing bad will happen. Okay? He tells you that nothing bad can happen to you, just like with Jesus. Throw yourself down. Nothing bad's going to happen. The Bible says that he'll give angels charge over you. Nothing bad's going to happen. He starts trying to convince you that the obvious consequences for your choice do not apply to you. You're special. Just take that drink. You won't be an alcoholic. You won't get drunk. You have, you can handle it. Just look at that pornography site. You won't become addicted. It won't affect your marriage, not you. Now it does to other people, but not you. You're special. Just, you know, smoke the marijuana. It'll relax you a little bit. It's not a gateway drug. You're not gonna get tired of that and move into cocaine or anything, not you. It happens to a lot of people, but not you. There are no consequences for you because you're special. He's gonna start trying to convince you that consequences Reaping and sowing, the law of reaping and sowing is not real, not for you. I see this with a lot of young people. They see it happen, and not me. No, I would never. No. There's no consequences. You're not going to lose your whole paycheck. Just go play a little while. You're not going to do this. That's not going to happen to you. Just enjoy it. You're special. That you're special line gets a lot of people. Everybody thinks they're special. Everybody thinks they're above natural consequences. All right? It happens to other people, but not you. That's tactic number two. That one is very effective. You know why? Everybody wants to feel special. And the enemy is just waiting to tell you that you're special. I get so tired of hearing people who think they're special. <laughs> That's a side note. I can't even get on it. But I will throw it out here just for the small little nugget. I don't think people always like it, but I do try when I talk to people or when I teach, I try to make us, I try to be a great equalizer because to me, one of the worst syndromes to have is people who think they're special. And by that, I mean, they think their suffering is a special type of suffering. No one else could understand it. Bull malarkey. Nothing has happened to you that hasn't happened to mankind from the beginning of time. That should be comforting to you and me, except, well, not if you want to sp feel special. If you want to be special and different by your suffering or by your success, then you're not going to like that teaching. You're not going to like that equalizing teaching. So you wouldn't probably like what I have to say. But I'm just going to let you know that the enemy uses your special tactic to do a lot of damage. And he does it with success. You're so special. And he does it with um, with suffering. You're so special. Poor you. Like, just know that we're all out here trying. And I have always been a believer that stop thinking that you're special and just look around. There's people who have are a lot more successful than you. And there's people who have it way worse than you. So how about just stop thinking about ourselves at all and just live? <laughs> I'm done with that. All right. So he says the bad stuff happens to other people. That's tactic number two. Number three, the third thing, oh, this is big. He promises you ownership and success of it. He then tells you, so, you know, in tactic number two, he said nothing bad's gonna happen. Well, in tactic number three, he promises you success. He promises you the good things. So then he, he lies to you and tells you that nothing bad will happen. But then he says, if you do what I tell you to do, all the good things are going to happen. And he promises you that you'll be in control of them. Just like he did with Jesus. 
I'll give you all of these kingdoms. I'll give you ownership if you do what I say. Well, that's not really control, is it? That's not really ownership, is it? That's puppeteering. That's puppets. But it's a really good tactic, and he uses it all the time. I'll give you fame. Just sign the dotted line. And people learn all too, all too soon they're not in control at all. That's why they say people sell their souls to the devil. They sell their souls to the music industry. They sell their souls for fame and success. Because when he gets you, when he fake hands over ownership of that, it's not real. <laughs> You're his puppet. And I mean, he's going to control you. I want to give you a connecting scripture, but a connecting story instead of one scripture. I want to show you this in action, not just with Jesus, but we're going to go all the way back to the Garden of Eden with Eve. Okay? Here's his three tactics, and he used the same three tactics on her. I'm showing you this because I want you to recognize that voice in your life and his tactics on you. Because he uses them on everybody. You're not special. He's just going to come at you with different things, but the tactics are going to be the same. All right? He says to Eve beautiful fruit. He is appealing to her senses. There's nothing wrong with that tree. That fruit is pretty, luscious, delicious, looks good, juicy. He's appealing to her senses, her eyes, her taste. Like, she's like, hmm, it does look good. I bet it tastes good. She's a human, right? Then he says, God said you couldn't eat of that tree. You won't die if you eat of that tree. That's his tactic number two. Nothing bad's going to happen to you. There are no consequences for your disobedience. There's no consequences. Nothing bad's going to happen. You're not going to die. We see his tactic there. He's telling you nothing's going to happen. And then we see his promise. We see his promise of success and control. Said, you're not going to die. He said he don't want you eating that because you'll become like him. Success. And you'll know good and evil. You'll be like God. Success and control. I mean, is there any greater success than being God? Absolutely not. And what does God have? Control of everything. Bam. Three tactics. Did it work? Yes, it did. It did. He hit the three big points. He appealed to her flesh. He told her there was going to be no consequences for her actions. And then he told her, instead, you'll be successful. Think about your life. Think about other people's lives. Think about your weak areas. Think about your sins. Think about the parts you have trouble with. What tactic is he using on you? What tactic is he using on me? Why am I believing it? Why do I keep falling for that? Why do I allow that voice? All right. I didn't do kingdom. I did do a connecting scripture at the bottom. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. My phone keeps dying. That's a good thing. I'm not being ugly to you. You are special to God. You're important and you're an individual. There's nobody like you on the planet. But what you've went through, the human experience is a very common one. And if you get to thinking that you're special and unique and whatever, in the wrong way, it will be a stumbling block for you. The devil is going to take it and use it against you. No temptation has taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. But with the temptation, he will make a way to escape that you'll be able to, that you'll be able to bear it. Eve had several escape routes. She could have realized on number one that obedience is better than anything I want. When the enemy told her, you're not going to die, all she had to do was realize God has never lied to me. And she could have looked around and said, my goodness, I have this entire garden. I don't need the fruit off that one tree that I was told not to eat of. But see, Jesus combated that temptation with scripture. He had the scripture. He had the knowledge. And because he had it, he was able to come back and go, nope, that's not right. I recognize that as a lie because the truth was in him. And that's your answer. You got to have the truth in you. The word's got to be in you so that you can recognize the tactic and the lie. But I hope I have provided you some information and some help today with the way that the enemy works to try to destroy you, to get you to participate in things you have no business doing. 
He's going to promise you a lot. They're all lies. They're all lies. Stay sober. Stay vigilant. Stay wise. Stand your ground. Stay in the word. Don't fall for his tricks. You're better than that. See you tomorrow.